In this tutorial, I want to bring you through my initial process for planning some video reference for my flower sack waving assignment. Now, when I go and produce video reference, there are some things that I always like to keep in mind. First off, I want to make sure that I am in an area that I feel comfortable, that I don't feel judged necessarily. Um, I, you know, I, for the most part, I feel pretty open regardless of where I am, so it's not a big deal to me, but it might be a big deal to you depending on where you're at. You also need an area where you have a lot of space to move. You don't want to be uh, limited by the, your surroundings. So, you know, a cluttered room or a hallway, those are not good places to be. You also need to be in a space where you can have the camera set at a distance where you can, generally speaking, see the feet of the character and whatever happens to be the top of the character. In this case, it's not just my head, but when I start waving, my hand will be up here, for instance. And uh, as a result, I need to make sure that my, my, my reference is going to be able to cover that amount of space, which is why I'm actually a little bit farther back from uh, recording myself than I normally would be. Now, I also want to make sure that the uh, camera, of course, is focused. I like to use a manual focus. Uh, so before I started recording this, because I was recording it on my own, I went in and I put a prop here uh, that basically I could use as a, I knew what my distance from camera would be, and I focused up on that, and that was great. I set the manual focus there. Um, also, just in this particular instance here, um, you know, with this green screen background, that's certainly not essential. It just happens to be the room that I was filming in, and um, I never use shoes on the green screen, so being um, barefooted or even better, um, I should say being barefooted is best. If you have socks on, that's not terrible, but it's not great. You basically want to be able to see as much of the body as possible, uh, and that includes wearing uh, loose-fitting clothing so that it doesn't uh, constrict your movement. I like to do it in shorts because that way I can better see my legs and my feet, um, and then, of course, I wear like a short sleeve shirt or something, and I can see my arms. Darker colors are not necessarily ideal, uh, even though I was wearing this black shirt on the day. I would suggest something that is a little bit easier to read, like a, a white shirt could be good. These shorts are fine. Um, but basically, I just want to be able to read the character as best as possible in all those movements. So when I went to uh, shoot this, I didn't necessarily have like a very specific thing in mind of what I wanted to do. I knew that the flower sack needs to wave, but how the flower sack goes about it, well, that was, you know, that was something I discovered as I went along. And um, as you'll notice here, I, I ended up doing a lot of different options. I have sort of just a, a basic, uh, you know, couple that I start with here where I uh, kind of bend down and, and, and wave a little bit, right? Very simple. Usually my first couple ideas are not my best. Um, and it's okay that I look quite silly. I say that at least to justify it to myself. Um, this one just kind of came to me as I was going. I felt a little tired. I felt a yawn coming on, and then I just decided, hey, that could be interesting. Maybe the flower sack is waking up and uh, sees somebody that he recognizes and starts waving, right? Um, so that was an unexpected thing, and I thought that hey, that's actually kind of a neat idea. Uh, and I ended up repeating that later on. Um, a few things look a bit silly, but that's okay. I might find something in there that I like. I might not. I also decided uh, what it would be like if the flower sack felt maybe a little bit scared, like maybe he was on a stage, for instance, and just kind of walked out there and, and felt a little bit like stage fright. And therefore, the kinds of motion that I got with this was quite different. So I'm trying different choices, different acting choices, um, different possibilities. And uh, in this one here, I, I took that idea and kind of even slowed it down a bit more. I don't know how well that would read in terms of animation, but um, it was just an idea, and I like to throw it as many ideas as I can. Um, and this one, you know, like, just make it really huge, really big, um, and sort of a side-to-side -side action. Probably won't keep any of those, but that's okay. And that one's just really totally silly. Um, different arm, just to say, okay, how does my body react on a different side? And um, Something a little bit more muted because you know a lot of the ones that I was doing up until then they were quite big and boisterous and that might be fine but at the same time I might decide that I wanted something that's a little bit more subdued. Now um, I went back and as you see here I leave the scene and I went back and I reviewed the video on 
my camera that I was recording from. And I said, all right, that's fine. Um, I liked some of the ideas. And I said, I'm going to try to expand a little bit more on some of those ideas. And I uh, recorded another video. This one's a bit shorter. And I like the idea of um, the, uh, the waking up tired. And so I tried to you know, emphasize that a bit more. Now, obviously, the timing here is very slow. So I wouldn't repeat the timing that I have. But I might take some of those ideas. In fact, I think that that's the shot that I'm going to work from as I plan my animation. So it starts to add in a little bit of a story, in fact, which is a bit more interesting than somebody just completely waving. Uh, just waving on its own, that is. That one's quite off balance. Um, you know, it's you have to kind of look at what's going to work well for the flower sack as well, based on the physiology of the flower sack. That one's got a nice stretch to it. Um, and you see that in my own reference, I sometimes add in a bit of things that the, the timing is a bit more like animated timing. Um, just sort of built that in over the years. Um, and yeah, so I started reviewing that and I decided that, hey, I think uh, this particular sequence here is probably what I think is most fascinating, what I can probably do the, the best work from. So let's go and take that particular sequence and bring that into Premiere so we can edit out just the part that we want. All right, so here I am in Premiere, and I'm going to need to create a new project. And we're going to call this uh, Flower flower sac um, wave reference. And then where I save that, um, I'll probably just make sure I save that onto a location uh, where I have a lot of extra space. So we'll just, uh, I'm going to save that here as, uh, create a new folder for myself, and I'll say flower sac wave, and we'll save it in there. And I can just take the default settings, and I'm going to bring in and uh, and dump in here my my flower sack. Um, so there we go, the flower sack reference that is. Oh, drag it down here. Okay. So um, as I work in here, there's uh, a couple different ways that I can try to isolate that footage. I could just double click on the reference there, um, the file itself, and in my preview window here, my source window, I could go through. And I could identify uh, the beginning, maybe say starting from about here. I could hit the I key to create an in point, and then get to the end of that and decide that the end is about there, uh, and hit the O key to get an out point. So I for in, O for out. And then I could just um, click and drag the video down here into my uh, timeline. All right, and now that just that little section is going to be uh, visible on the timeline. That's one way to do it. Um, I could do that same thing in another fashion, which I'm just going to delete that now. Um, I'm going to, instead of doing it through my source window, I'm just going to drag the video clip directly into my uh, sequence. And I could do pretty much those same kind of operations directly in the sequence. So if I press the plus key to zoom in onto the timeline, um, I can scroll backwards here just to try to find where my sequence began. Somewhere around... Oh, you know what? Before I do that, because um, I had actually already done this, I already sort of isolated a section in here, I can't just... Um, if I drag this over, it's going to just drag over that little part. So I'm going to set that back to its normal full size and pretend that we were sort of back in our original settings. So we pull the whole thing down there. That's what the issue was that I was having. If I uh, just come in here and I could just um, press the I key right there to create an input and then come over to the end of it and press the O key as soon as it finishes somewhere around there, All right? And then uh, when I go to export this, it will export just this section between the input and the output as well. So just two different ways of doing the same thing. Um, and uh, let's just say, let's just export that now. Let's go to File, Export, Media. And I want to export this as a QuickTime file, yes. And I am not going to export it with the PAL-DV settings. I want to make sure that I keep my original source settings. So I'm going to click on 
match source here down in the basic video settings. All right. Um, and the video codec is going to be, uh, let's just say H.264 for this. And um, right now, it, even though I said match source, it doesn't seem to actually be doing precisely what I want because I can see up here that um, the, uh, the, the, my output is set to 720 by 576, which is standard PAL format, uh, not what we want. So I'm going to make sure to unclick the uh, checkboxes here, which kind of lock down these options. And now when I press match source, um, it's going to go through and actually give me the correct size based on the original size and uh, settings of my video. So the reason why I wasn't doing that before is because these were checked, which locks down um, those different uh, parameters. Now, um, that's fine. So this is a 1080p uh, video at 25 frames per second. And um, I don't necessarily need to, need to really worry about anything because this video, I'm never going to use it except for just to do some study from. And um, I don't need audio, for instance. I can turn off export audio. And uh, that should be fine. So just the question is, do I need it to be 100% quality? And probably the answer is no. Just to save some file size, I might set that down to like 90%. And um, since I don't have anything else to worry about, I don't need to queue it up. I'm just going to export the sequence now and see how long it takes. OK, that's recorded across now. I have my uh, reference over here. There we go. And I've just saved this out into the same directory that I have the project saved into. So you can see that right here. All right, so um, that is the way that I had exported out of Premiere. In the next tutorial, I'm going to start looking at how to take uh, our reference and get some ideas from it and start doing some drawings that will lay the foundation for our planning for the WAVE assignment.